Hello and welcome to the program. And a special happy birthday mention to the PRIA, marking its 60th anniversary this month. In this edition, we have a look at financial and investor relations in the tough economic environment. What can PR do to settle jittery investors and convince a judgmental analyst community? It boils down to confidence. During the past 18 months, since the beginning of the current bear market, there's been a significant change in the psychology of many investors, particularly retail investors, because they're afraid. They need reassurance. They need to know what to do with their portfolio. So whereas in the past they have bought and sold shares, they now need a reason to hold a share because the alternative is to go liquid uh, and to raise cash. We've seen people in 2008, 2009 who were so concerned about what was going on, and I'm talking about very senior managers, that they really didn't know what to do. And yet, once they could get through that initial period and start to recover, they realised that doing nothing was absolutely not an option. They needed to work out very quickly the appropriate communication and start to get it out there. A CEO said to me um, six months ago, um, there is no point in my putting out new good news because the market isn't interested in good news. It's only interested in negative stories, so if I put out good news, I'd be wasting it. But he was wrong because his shareholders want news, whether it's good or bad, because otherwise they may sell for the wrong reasons. So one of the things we are doing, we're saying to our, share, to our clients the whole time, you must keep communicating. You must keep a dialogue going with your uh, investors. People who have managed their communication really well through the crisis have almost universally increased the frequency of their communication to key audiences. They may not have had a lot to say, but what they did do was they went to great efforts to maintain the trust they'd built up in all the previous years by continuing to communicate in really difficult times. All companies need to be very close now to their shareholders. Uh, they need to communicate with their shareholders whether things news is good or whether news is bad. Lose the trust of your shareholders, lose the confidence of your shareholders, and they'll sell your shares. As I said earlier, they need a reason to hold your shares. I think there's probably one other thing that's unique to investment communication, which is that, and, and it's absolutely relevant to shareholders as well, which is that managing expectations, which you know sometimes the public relations and communication and in fact marketing professions don't really want to do, but managing investor expectations in this environment has become much more important. So rather than selling the story, which might be about performance or the underlying fund or share or the investment outlook, it's very much now about saying to investors, the short term doesn't necessarily look very good, but our long term strategy is X, Y and Z, and we believe that that strategy is going to produce the best outcome for you in the long term, but in the short term you may not get a great return. So being really clear with people up front about what they can expect going in, what's going to happen to their money, and then really essentially asking them for permission to hang on through that time and try to build trust by being very clear with them so they don't get a nasty surprise. And of course, if you have any contributions you'd like to make to PRTV, please email producer at reputationtv.com. And a reminder to the members of the PRIA, do log on to the website and have a look at the latest newsletter. Well, next month we look again at the economy, but this time we focus in on what it means to the public relations business. That's hard times in September. Until then, thanks for your company and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.